Hi, my name is Matt Young. I'm with UCF Physical Therapy. This is my patient, Victor. And today we're just going to administer the Tenetti Coma Outcome Measure. So this outcome measure is in the activity ICF domain. It's basically measuring balance and gait, and it is a performance measure. Um, this outcome should take about 10 to 15 minutes to administer. Um, a few things of the equipment that you would need is a hard armless chair, a stopwatch or a wristwatch, and then a 15 foot walkway. Um, a couple of target populations that this test is appropriate for includes geriatrics, ALS, Parkinson's, and normal pressure hydrocephalus. Um, and then according to the NeuroEdge task force, this outcome measure is recommended to administer to those with a Parkinson's diagnosis. So moving on to the test. The first portion of the test is what we call the balance section. So looking at Victor's balance here, we're looking to see if he's able to maintain a steady and safe balance while he's sitting upright in the chair. Notice he's not relying on the backrest or anything to maintain his balance, so he gets a score of 1. If he were to lean or slide in the chair, we'd give him a score of 0. Um, next, I'm going to ask Victor to rise from the chair. And because he was able to rise from the chair without using his arms, we'd give him a score of 2. Now, if he had to rely on his arms to help him get out of the chair, we'd give him a score of 1. Or if he was unable to get out of the chair without my assistance, he would score a 0. So he scores a 2 on that one. And then also looking at the when he comes to a rising position, we're looking at if he's able to rise on the first attempt. So he was, so he scored a 2. If he was able to um, rise requiring more than one attempt, we'd score a 1. Or if he was unable to do it without my help, again, it's a 0. So next we want to look at his standing balance. Um, uh, looking at his balance here, we can see that he's pretty much steady without using a walker or any other kind of support, so we would score him a 2. If he was steady but using, using an assistive device or any kind of support, we'd give him a 1. And then if he was unsteady, such as if he's staggering or if he's moving his feet while we're looking at his balance in the standing position, we'd give him a 0. So he scores a 2 on that one. So with my patient in the standing position, we also wanted to look at his standing balance. So because Victor is able to maintain a steady standing balance with a narrow base of support, and he's not using any kind of assistive device, he would score a 2. If you were to demonstrate a steady but wide base of support using an assistive device, he'd score a 1. And if you demonstrated unsteadiness in this position, he'd score a 0. So you would score a 2 on this component. So the next portion of the test is what we call the nudge. So with my patient's feet together in this maximum position, we're basically going to give you three nudges to your sternum here. Try to maintain your balance, okay? Mm -hmm. Good. So because Victor was able to maintain a steady balance throughout the nudge, we'd give him a two. If he were to stagger, uh, reach, or catch himself, we'd give him a one. And if he began to fall during the nudge test, we'd give him a zero. Next, we want to look at his balance with his eyes closed. So can you close your eyes for me? So spending five seconds here, basically looking if he's steady or unsteady. Because he demonstrates a steady, upright balance with his eyes closed, we give him a one. You can open your eyes. And if he were unsteady, we give him a zero. Um, the next part of the balance section is turning 360 degrees. So what I want you to do is just turn in a full circle and come back to that same position that you're standing in right now. Good. And because Victor was able to perform the 360 degree motion by using continuous steps, we give him a 1. And then the other component that we're looking at is if he's steady or unsteady. Because Victor was steady throughout the whole process, we give him a 1. If he were unsteady, such as staggering or reaching to grab, we give him a 0. And then the next one on the balance section is sitting down. So can you have a seat for me? And then because Victor was able to sit down in a safe and controlled smooth motion, we give him a 2. If he were to have to use both arms, or if it was not a smooth motion, we'd give him a 1. And if it was unsafe, such as misjudging the distance of the chair, or if he were to fall into the chair, we'd give him a 0. Alright, so adding up all the total scores from the balance section of the Tenetti, um, Victor pretty much scored perfect on each component and receives a score of 16 out of 16 on the balance section. And the next section of the Tenetti is gait. So, have my patient stand up. 
So what we're going to do for the gait section is I'm going to have my patient basically walk down to the X that we have marked on the floor, which is 15 feet. He's going to walk at a steady pace on the way there, and then I want you to walk fast paced but safe on the way back, okay? So a few things before we start this, what we're looking for is basically his step length and his step height, his foot clearance, his step symmetry, his step continuity, the path that he takes, any deviations of the trunk, and then his overall walking time. So when you're ready, um, just walk at a safe, steady pace. Okay, and then turn around, and then on our way back, we're going to go for a fast but safe pace. Good, you can have a seat. So basically what we saw when we looked at his gait here, um, was there any hesitancy when I told him to begin walking? So because Victor didn't, didn't demonstrate any hesitancy, we give him a 1. If he were to hesitate or require multiple attempts to get started, he would score a 0. Um, and then looking at the step length and step height, he was able to demonstrate the appropriate step through gait with both his right and left lower extremity, so he gets one apiece for that section. Um, looking at fo uh, foot clearance, he didn't stumble, he was able to have the appropriate amount of dorsiflexion through the swing phase, so his left and right lower extremity both clear the floor, so one for each of those. If he were to demonstrate any kind of foot drop throughout that assessment, we'd score a zero on the uh, the large extremity that that was demonstrated on. Looking at step symmetry, his right and left step length were equal, so he gets a 1. If they were unequal, we'd score him a 0. And then step continuity, um, his steps appeared continuous throughout the gait process with both the steady pace and the fast pace coming back, so we'd score him a 1. If he were to stop or discontinue any steps throughout the process, he would score a 0. And then looking at the overall path that Victor took during the assessment, he was able to walk straight without an assistive device, so he scores a two. If he were to demonstrate any kind of mild or moderate deviation, or if he used an assisted device, he would score a one. Or if there was marked deviation throughout the process, he would score a zero. Um, the last two components, we're looking at his trunk. Again, Victor was able to demonstrate no sway throughout the whole process. Um, he walked with an appropriate upright trunk. He wasn't flexed. He didn't have to use his arms or an assistive device to help him get back and forth, so we'd score him a 2. If he didn't, didn't demonstrate any sway but had flexion, or if the knees are back or uses arms for stability, you'd get a 1, or if there was market sway with the use of an assistive device, he'd score a 0. And the last component is walking time. So we looked at Victor's heels as he walked there and back. His heels were almost touching while walking, maintaining um, within 4 inches throughout the whole uh, the whole test, so he scores a 1. If he um, were to perform the gait assessment by walking with his heels further apart than 4 inches, we would score him a 0. So after completing the gait section, Victor pretty much demonstrated all perfect scores in the gait and receives a score of 12 out of 12 for that section. So combining the gait and the balance scores together, we come up with a total score of 28 out of 28.